Hello everyone, my name is Squidhead Joe. In today's video, we're gonna be going over good editing softwares for beginners. Uh, this was left on my last YouTube video slash tweet um, in, the, in the comments or wherever on the YouTube video portion of it. Uh, and I wanted to go ahead and try to answer this question or wherever the best I can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that there's two editing softwares that are available or whatever that might be able to accomplish this. One is gonna be for brand new, just straight out, like you're just brand new, fresh or whatever to content creation and you're going to be going into it. Um, and then when you start to get a little bit better and you've been doing it for a while, wherever there's another software that I would recommend for those people who are like that going into intermediate, meaning they've been doing it for, you know, a couple of years or something like that. And they, they looking for a more robust editing software or wherever that's not going to technically break the bank. And I'll put asterisk on that. That's not going to be overcomplicated, but they can still get a lot of work done. Uh, one of them is going to be one to share for more. The other one's going to be DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a free editing software. You can download today and start using it. Um, it is a little bit complicated and I would say stay away from it if you're super brand new to content creation because it's going to be a lot to ingest uh, and you're going to have to sit down and I, I don't want to say take classes, but you're going to sit down and watch a lot of YouTube videos to figure out. And on top of that, chances are you're not going to use a lot of the features, even though it's free, you're not going to get a lot of use case scenarios out of the how complicated the program is going to be for you to learn. Um, the same thing with like, I would say certain th aspects of like Adobe's uh, suites of the, all their programs that they have. And on top of that, paying monthly for some stuff or wherever that you just probably wouldn't even use or take really advantage of, you're just kind of wasting your money. The same thing with, I would say, DaVinci Resolve, if you went to go ahead and pay the, for the pro version, which is $300. Um, we'll get to why you would pay for that in a little bit, but it's not going to pertain to, I would say, 70 to 75% of content creators. They're the ones that probably I would recommend just using Wondershare for Mora. I know there's other programs out there like Sony Vegas um, and probably a whole bunch of other ones like CapCut and all that stuff. And depending on if you're using a phone, laptop, tablet, PC, depending on their, your PC's hardware specs and stuff like that, just make sure you do your research to see what the system requirements are for whatever editing software you decide to go with, even if it's not one of these two that I'm recommending today. Um, so what's so great about wanting to share for more? Well, Let's get the elephant out of the room. If you paid attention to any of it and you probably heard about the controversy where it happened, I think at the beginning of this year, end of last year, um, about perpetual licenses and all that stuff, you can just Google that stuff. I mean, it's it's up there. It's up to you if you want to uh, go ahead after, you know, doing your research on that. Um, but from what I understand and what I have been using for years now has been Wondershare. Um, if you're a content creator who is making YouTube shorts, TikToks, Instagram posts, uh, long form content videos and all that stuff. And you're looking for a sim simpler, I would say editing software or wherever. I'm not saying that you should change if you're already been in the game for a while, but this editing software has a lot of uh, intuitive features again for brand new content creators, not people who are experts at, you know, doing stuff really quickly. Cause I see people just speed running Adobe After Effects or Sony Vegas, and then they try one to share and they're like, oh, this program's crap. And it's like, yeah, it's probably bad because you're so used to all the features and you have all these special plugins and all that stuff or wherever, whereas one to share is more of a stepping stone to uh, easily get into that stuff. And like I said, a lot of us are just super busy. We have kids, we have family, we have other obligations where we don't have time to be sitting here watching multiple videos a week, learning how to do something simple as a J cut or just splicing videos and stuff like that in other programs and learning like which plugins do I need and which plugins are gonna work with what and not conflict and do all this stuff and project files. And like, there's, like I said, 70% to 75% of content creators just need one or show for more and that's it. Especially if you're doing a lot of, I would say vlogging type content or talking head videos or just, you know, quick little, like I said, compilations of stream highlights or something like that. Um, and like I said, shorts or wherever, and you wanna add text on screen and all this stuff or wherever, this program is gonna be simple for you. It's relatively cheap. I'll put the prices for the plans or and all that stuff information on the video so you'll have it. But 
essentially uh you don't really need other anything than buying the actual program itself there is little add-on packs and stuff like that on the website you don't really need any of them because the software comes with enough i would say uh items or wherever that's just given to you wherever that's free that works um if you do want to buy something wherever and you're wondering if there is a, something a little extra to add the cherry on top or wherever then the only thing i would suggest buying period um if you do anything it's like a vip subscription thing or wherever i'll post on screen whatever they call it um it's a little extra money i think it's like it charges like every three months or something like that um, but essentially it just adds a little bit more access to certain things. Like you could have pop on screen, like, you know, leave a like and all that stuff, leave a comment and just like various different things, wherever that would be very useful, depending on what platform you're going to be posting to and stuff. Um, so that would be the only other necessary plugin that I would say that you can use, um, within their software. And the reason why I recommend from Wondershare for more so much, I'll get into it right now is the fact of there's a lot of e, uh, AI features that have been updated into the software recently where there's AI thumbnail making. I haven't tried it yet, but there's it's there. If you need AI text to speech or speech to text, it's there with the asterisk. Um, there is AI music sampling where you just type in what the type of music that you're looking for. Their AI machine will go ahead and generate it and make that. And on top of that, there, and all that's non-copyrighted. And then on top of that, they already have a suite of non-copyrighted music where we're listed by different types of genre from lo-fi to pop to jazz to whatever. So, you, you know, you never have to go looking for, is this music, you know, non-copyrighted? Can I use this? Can I use that? Or wherever. I'm not saying all the songs are bangers, but it, you have what you need right there. And again, all the stuff that you get just with the base program, like I said, text to speech, uh, speech to text, all AI generated. And it's fairly accurate as long as you're speaking fluently and uh, enunciating your, and I would say, pronunciating your um, words and everything like that and speaking clearly. It's very accurate. Still, you have to double check and stuff like that, but you can upload your own fonts. You can do outlines and stuff, animations for the fonts or wherever to come in, pop on screen, be all fancy and stuff like that for you know shorts or wherever to grab people's attention and everything, even for longer form videos and everything. The asterisk I was talking about with the text of speech and the speech of text is that you only get a so many uh, allotted time per month. This is how they try to nickel and dime you. Um, so you can pay for extra time if you need that extra seconds or wherever, even though you get a decent amount, I would say, of seconds and everything. Um, but the highest tier that you can pay for, I think it's like 20 bucks or something. Again, I'll put the prices on screen. Um, but you get like five hours worth. And if you're doing nothing but shorts and you just need text or wherever because you're not using it for full blown videos the whole entire way through using nothing but subtitles. Um, I, I don't see you needing to go over to five hours. I think there's like a 30 minute one, an hour or two or wherever one, and then like a five hour tier or wherever. So it's up to you. Again, you will pay that monthly or whenever you need the extra time or wherever you can do it. Um, so again, it's up to you if you want to pay for that. But that's the only thing that I might say you might need or wherever other than that VIP thing or wherever. But overall, you're not really going to be, you know, coming crazily out of pocket like you would if you had DaVinci Resolve. You would have to get the pro version in order to use some plugins and some features like the text to speech or speech to text with the AI system, which is actually really good. But again, you have that $300 paywall in order to do that. DaVinci Resolve is more of a program if you need to use, uh, I would say, EQs like having VSTs and stuff like a voice remover, echo remover, um, I, I would say rustling and stuff like that, uh, remover, remover, like if you had some low hums and all this stuff, like it's, it's a really good way to get your mic to sound really, really good. And, you know, you can put your own VSTs in or wherever, as long as it's compatible. Um, and on top of that, you can color correct your footage. Like what you're seeing right now is a creative LUT that I created in DaVinci Resolve, exported it so the LUT could work in OBS and not put it in OBS. You can do stuff like that or wherever to get your videos and to sound good and look good um, within DaVinci Resolve that you really can't really do in Wondershare Filmora. The color correction options and stuff like that in Wondershare Filmora are not the best. So you're not gonna really be making, I would say montages or shooting in 
a camera picture profile, if you know what that is, converting it to Rec. 709 and then trying to come in there and color grade. You're not going to be doing that in Wondershare for more, or I should say you shouldn't be. The option is there, but you shouldn't be doing that because the it's their color correction quality is just not really good. It's not really accurate. And on top of that, with Wondershare for more, you have wonderful things like audio ducking. If you don't know what audio ducking is, is that if you want a clip or a section of a video to have louder audio than let's say the background music and you want the background music to uh, audio to drop down and then cut back in when let's say you stop talking, um, you can do that simply by again hitting audio ducking on your talking clip and that will force everything else that's not the clip itself to lower its volume onto a specified time or wherever. You can do wonderful stuff like that. Um, again, 70 to 75% of content creators out there would love the ease of use of Wondershare. The problem is, is that when you have uh, video footage, like if you went out to vlog or something like that, like I said, I've always talked about if you're shooting the camera picture profile to color correct later, um, it's not gonna be as accurate. And on top of that, if you have a microphone that's not already pre-EQ'd, you're not going to be able to drag VSTs or do anything like that with the equalizer inside one of Share for More like you could in DaVinci Resolve. And that's kind of where the split happens. If you're intermediate and you want and you need that color correction, the montage worthy stuff, being able to EQ a microphone just to make it sound beautiful wherever, you're going to be able to do that in DaVinci Resolve. And one of Share for More, you're dealing with certain frequency ranges and that's it. And you don't really get a robust. I would say amount of frequencies to really mess with. So trying to find sliders or wherever, instead of just slapping a plug in or wherever that will automatically do it for you, like you can find for DaVinci Resolve where the AI just automatically cuts out background removal or echo or anything like that, or background noise or anything, like just slapping a plug in and let the AI do it and then you're good to go versus one to share, you have to tweak and stuff like that. And you just can never get the mic to sound perfect. Um, that's the difference really between the two. Uh, but like I said, most of us have good sounding mics anyways. Most of us use programs outside of our editing software to make our microphone sound good. And then on top of that, you know, our webcams and all that stuff usually look good too. So you might not need, like I said, DaVinci Resolve, um, even though those portions of DaVinci Resolve is free, that's more so people who are doing videos like I do for product reviews, vlogs and stuff like that. Like I said, shooting and color picture profiles on cameras, Whereas Wondershare for more, if you are just streaming and you're just playing video games and you're doing clips and stuff like that, and you're dragging it into an editing software to make shorts or to make a quick little small little video wherever about something or wherever in a video game. And it's not really when you think about the project that you're about to do or the video that you're about to make and you're like, this should be a relatively easy and simple video or a quick video or wherever then Wondershare for more is going to fit that. You don't need to have like these crazy timelines and all that stuff or wherever. Again, it's not going to make montages. You're still going to need Adobe After Effects or Sony Vegas or even DaVinci Resolve to uh, be able to do those certain things. But when it comes to Wondershare for more, like I said, most basic videos that you see on YouTube, even to, to this day, they should probably be using Wondershare for more just because of all the pluses I've said. The only negative that I've ever had with Wondershare for more is the fact of the app crashing due to um, a GPU error, um, but it was more so with Wondershare for more 10 and 11. Um, and that was mostly on my older PC that had a 2060 in it. Um, now I have a 3080 and since I've had this 3080 for about, uh, I would say a year and a half, probably closer to two years, I've only had the program close on me and I know this for a fact because it's rarely even happened. I've kind of counted the times. It's only done it four times. That's it. And I forget what number of Wondershare for more on, I'll put it on screen or wherever. But again, you get access to all the updates and stuff like that of the current version versus, uh, I mean, current version and all the previous versions. And then when a newer version comes out, like, let's say, again, we're on for more, want to share for more 20. When 21 comes out, you will have to repurchase 21. But there's usually a long lifespan between, you know, the versions. 
And on top of that, like I said, you get all the updates for free and you can still use the older version and just keep using it. You just don't get if they add anything new in 21 or all the way up to like 25 or something like that. If they add anything in those newer ones, you won't get it, but you still have all the updates for that current version plus the previous versions. So, I mean, take what you will. If you don't want to, if you just want to buy it for what it has now, again, this is probably the best time because all those AI stuff that has been added and all just the the plethora of plugins and stuff that are just default for the program. Um, this is the best time to do it. So if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be links to the, in the description to um, DaVinci Resolve and want to share for more. Plus that YouTube channel that I talked about that has the tips for both programs. And on top of that, um, the social media links or wherever. So you can come talk to me live if you want to watch this on kick or something like that. And actually just you know, ask me any questions or anything like that. I'll try to do my best to help you out uh, if you do have any. So with that being said, hopefully you guys continue to have a squid test today. I hope that uh, this helps people out or wherever. Again, feel free to leave comments on the YouTube version. If you're watching this on Twitter, um, the links will be there. So appreciate the comment and everything like that. Hopefully that answers you, uh, your question and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid test today. God bless you and yours. Deuces, everybody. Much love.